time for some battle ready Necrons as I show you how to paint Necron Lich Guard. And it's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right, here we go, let's paint some Necron Lich Guard and as you can see, I'm painting quite a few. Now I've primed these black and I'm now going in with some black paint, just filling in the little gaps that the primer has missed. So let me explain what I'm actually painting here. I'm painting 15 Lich Guard where I've got five of them magnetized with all of the weapon options. I've got a tutorial on how to do that, which I'll link up in the description below. I'm then painting 10 Lich Guard. Five of them I've built completely and the other five are in pieces because I had to strip the paint off and at the same time all of the pieces came off. So I'm painting them separately. Then I've got five 3D printed Lich Guard, which I'll be making a video about in the future, so keep an eye out for that. However, let's get on and paint these. So first of all, we are going to use Iron Breaker. We're going to put some of this onto the wet palette, and then we are going to get our dry brush. I'm going to dry brush these models all over with this color. Now if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know that I don't actually use washes when it comes to my silver. I find that using the dry brush technique, when done well, actually looks very good. You get a nice old sort of mottled look. You could just paint these silver and then use a black wash and then just highlight them up afterwards. This is nice and quick and simple to do and it still looks very good. Now I've been playing Necron since 3rd edition and we used to have a unit called Necron Pariah. Now this was a very cool unit. It is no longer in the codex, however we have Necron Lich Guard which I suppose is the modern version of the old Pariah miniatures. So I'm going to paint these exactly the same as I did my old Pariah miniatures many many years ago just to match them into the army. So when I'd finished dry brushing this colour all over the miniatures, I then got out the Rune Feng Steel Silver Paint, put that in my wet palette and started dry brushing over the top of the Iron Breaker. This gave the metal finish a little bit more depth, brought it out, but with the dry brushing technique also still kept that mottled older feel about the miniature and of course keeping the black undercoat in the recesses. And again, I just paint this all over. Now there are a couple of areas which I haven't painted silver. As you can probably see from the table, there's the war scythe shaft and also the hyperphase sword shaft. And that's because I keep those black, again, just to match them into my old miniatures. Okay, so that's the silver done. And now we are going to move on to the green. I'm going to start with Caliban Green. Put some of this onto my wet palette. Now I add some water to the paint this time, which I didn't do on the dry brush because you don't need to water your paint for dry brushing. But I have added some water. And then I start painting the little weapon sections that are going to be green. I call them the green rods because, well, in the old days, this kit would have had green rods and this is the section that would have been green. So I base coat these sections here all in green and I do this with two thin coats. Okay, so next up, it's warp stone green. What a lovely green color this is. We are going to base coat all of the orbs that we want to be green. So anything that looks like an orb, base coat it with this color. You're going to need around two coats because again, of course, we're going to thin our paint with a little bit of water. Okay, so next up is Mute Green. Again, I'm going to put some of this into the wet palette with some water and I've got a slightly smaller brush and then we're going to paint over the orbs that we just painted. The idea is to leave the original color on the outside recessed area and then have the mute green in the middle and this will start to make our orbs pop. Now I'm going to paint this color in a few other areas as well, in particular into the eye sockets because my Necrons have green eyes. I then went back to the weapon, the green rod, and I painted this color 
on the raised areas of the weapon, leaving the Caliban green in the recesses. And I actually had to paint this around four times just to build up the colour. It does take a little time, but once it's done, it looks really cool. Now off camera, I painted some of my orbs on five of my Lich Guard in a different way. And that's because I was matching them in to the five I'd painted a couple of years ago where I tried to paint my green to a higher standard. I used a method called block glazing and I've got a video on block glazing for you which I'll link you up to at the end of this one for you to watch. So if you want to paint your orbs to a higher level than just layering them on like I'm doing in this video, then that is a video worth looking at. Okay, so next is a Abaddon Black, again with some water in it on our wet palette. And we're going to go in and paint all the black areas that we want to paint black, obviously. So, in my case, it's the shaft of the weapons, because it looks really cool in black and gives it a contrast from the silver. I'm also going to paint some areas on the shield there's four little sections that stick out on the sides and the top and bottom, which I'm going to paint black. Again, it just adds a point of difference to them. So I'm going to paint that all black, and then we will be back. Okay, so next we're going to go back to Iron Breaker, and we are going to do some more dry brushing, but this time very, very light dry brushing over the black that we just painted. We just want to give the black a little highlight but not turning it into a metal colour. So just incredibly light dry brushing over the black. Now you may have seen I have a new board. I've actually made a video on this board previously but basically I had to move my miniatures off of the desk because my girlfriend needed the desk so I made this little board with some magnetic sheet on and now I can transport it off of the table when my girlfriend needs it. So that's why you've got a change of scenery there. Okay, so next we are going to paint the white. So put some white on your wet palette with a little bit of water. White can be a hard color to paint. However, with a bit of patience, it is actually quite easy. We're going to paint it with multiple layers. I'm going to be putting on about six layers of this color but we're going to end up with a nice bright white. I'm going to paint the tabard white, and although there are recesses on the tabard, I'm not going to try to leave the recesses unpainted because it's going to be quite difficult to do that, especially with so many layers. So I'm just going to paint the whole of the tabard white and the crest section on the head. Now on the crest section, I also paint the top of it but please note, I don't paint the sides. I did try painting the sides, but I felt it just looked a bit weird. So yeah, white on the top and the front and back, paint the front of the tabard, no need to paint the back of it because you can't really see it and it looks fine metal from the back. Plus it's gonna be quite difficult to get the brush in there. So we will paint all of that and also the Necron symbol on the shield, just to bring some extra detail to the shield itself. Okay, so that is the white all done. It's looking really nice, bright and clean because we did it in multiple coats. Now we're going to get some Dawnstone Grey on our wet palette. We're going to get a very small paintbrush, a triple zero paintbrush. And we're going to line in all of the recesses on the tabard. And that is how it's looking, pretty cool. Right, next, again going back to my old Pariah miniatures and indeed third edition Necron Codex, we are going to paint purple on the middle section of the chest just under where the Necron symbol is. So I'm going to put some of that on my wet palette. I'm going to use Xerius purple and we're going to carefully paint that on the little shape just under where the Necron symbol is. And there it is, all dried. Now, I did actually go in with a purple wash on top of the paint colour, just to darken it down a little, because the purple I'm using now was a different purple to my old Pariah purple, where Games Workshop changed the colours. So, with that done, I'm now going to highlight the purple, and I'm going to use Screamer Pink. 
This is going to be a very gentle dry brush just over the purple. I'm going to use this new Games Workshop brush which is a nice pointed bristle so that I don't get it on any of the silver and I'm just going to go up and down in a little gentle motion just to highlight the purple. This is very very delicate hardly touching the model but it just adds a bit of depth to the purple. Okay so with that done we are going to move on to the next colour which is gold. I'm using Gihanna's gold and I'm going to shake this pot very well and I'm going to even stir it with a stick because this colour is quite red and if you don't stir it you get a really red gold and that's not the gold that I'm after. So I'm going to put this gold colour in well various areas of this miniature you can put as much as you like on yourself depending on your paint scheme but I'm going to paint the Necron symbol on the chest plates there where we've just painted the purple and then the little collar section just above it where his head sits into. I'm also going to paint around the shield where there's a circular section which sort of sticks out so there's four sections that stick out uh, just like on my old shield I'm going to paint that with gold as well and all of the very small Necron symbols on all of the weapons. This is going to take me some time, I'm going to need a very small brush to get those symbols done, but we can do it. Okay, with that all done, we are ready for the bases. I'm going to put some PVA glue onto the base and then some sand. Once that's done, I'm then going to paint the sand black and again, let that dry. And then once that's dried, I'm going to dry brush the black with Dawnstone Grey. And then all I've got to do is paint black around the rim of the bases, put on the basing material, little Necron crystals, whatever you want to use, and then we are done. Necron Lich Guard ready for battle. Of course, these are the sword and board version, but I've got also the magnetized ones, which can be Lich Guard with both options or Praetorians with both options. There's going to be a video on the 3D printed ones very shortly, but until then, if you want to find out how to magnetize the Lich Guard with all weapon options, there is a video for you to check out next. And here is the playlist of all of my other Necron painting tutorials. Uh -huh.